The Ron Paul Institute for Peace and Prosperity welcomes you to Five Minutes, Five Issues. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, I am Adam Dick, a Ron Paul Institute Senior Fellow. Let's start. Issue one. I plan to start with good news about the Transportation Security Administration, which I have criticized previously. It turns out, the TSA would not let that happen. Tom Angel reported Wednesday at Mass Roots that the TSA had posted on its website that travelers may bring their medical marijuana in their carry-on or checked bags. Shortly after Angel's report, the TSA removed the marijuana information from its website explaining it had been posted by mistake. Issue 2 Susan Rice, who was President Barack Obama's National Security Advisor, requested dozens of times that names of people related to Donald Trump's campaign and presidential transition be revealed or unmasked in intelligence reports summarizing surveilled communications. Thus reported Eli Lake on Monday at Bloomberg, based on accounts from anonymous U.S. officials. Senator Rand Paul is calling for Rice to testify under oath about the matter. Paul says that the unmasking is an enormous deal, and that he wants to find out if Obama directed Rice to do it. Issue 3 In one of his earliest speeches as president, Donald Trump repeated at the Central Intelligence Agency headquarters his opinion that the U.S. should have seized the oil in Iraq, and proceeded to comment that maybe you'll have another chance. Might U.S. action to seize oil be proceeding now in neighboring Syria? Ron Paul wrote the following in his latest column. The president has illegally sent hundreds of U.S. troops to fight on the ground in Syria. Current U.S. positions in eastern Syria suggest that Washington may be looking to carve out parts of oil-rich areas of the country for some kind of future federation. Issue 4 Drive down a highway in Texas and you may see billboards declaring how much you could win in the state government's lottery. Want to try to win the cash? Buy a lotto ticket or a few at a gas station. While the state promotes its own gambling operation, state laws stand in the way of private companies providing people with the opportunity to wager in certain games that involve chance. In January of last year, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton issued an opinion declaring his interpretation that state law bars companies from charging fees for providing fantasy sports games where participants can win money. On Monday, a Texas State House committee held a hearing on legislation that would exclude such fantasy sports games from the gambling prohibition. Legalizing the games would expand respect for individual rights and eliminate another excuse for government intervention into our lives. But it is only a small step. Texas and other states could do much more by legalizing gambling across the board. Issue 5 Last week, the Office of the Inspector General of the U.S. Department of Justice issued a report regarding asset seizures or, as the report says, asset forfeitures. These are seizures government agents may undertake even without a court ruling regarding any connection between seized property or the property owner and the crime. Looking at the cash seizures, the report's numbers indicate the drug war's big contribution. The Drug Enforcement Administration was responsible for about 80% both of the cash seizures and the dollar value seized from fiscal year 2007 to fiscal year 2016 by the three government entities studied, the DEA, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. That's a wrap. Transcripts of 5 Minutes, 5 Issues episodes, including links to related information, are at the Ron Paul Institute blog. Three, two, one.